right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Prashant. That was really, really great uh, insights about the school. I believe, uh, you know, a lot of the students have learned a lot from your presentation. And of course, uh, so I want to encourage everybody to really, uh, you know, uh, put your questions forward so that the good professor can be able to answer them for us uh, in case Whatever questions that you have about the school, the program, uh, please just do that. And I believe Wilfred will be more than happy to present those ones to the professor so that he can be able to answer them. Um, hmm. You want to go ahead, Lorna? Yeah, as you write down, you can write down your questions so that our team can be looking at that. And then in the meantime, Lorna, Daniel, and uh, maybe James can uh, go ahead and not talk about the school and their experience uh, so far. Okay, thank you, Dr. Prashant and Bob. Uh, so my experience here has been awesome. Uh, so when we first came here, we were a bit you know, nervous because it was going to be a very new experience, especially for me who had not really traveled outside Kenya. But since we got here, like everyone has just been friendly, like, you know, Dr. Prashan talks about professors being, you know, the best of the best, but they are also mentors. Like in class, you can ask about anything, not just within what you're, you know, studying in the particular class. They are there to help you. You just need to show up. Like you just need to ask a question and they are very willing to help. And there are very great opportunities here as well. Uh, I am sure you all know that I am a GA at this school and I actually work with Dr. Prashant, who is awesome. So we can't really wait to, we can't wait to meet you guys here and experience what we are experiencing. There are opportunities ranging from GAs. Uh, Dr. Prashant talked about the fee waiver, which is also very good, by the way. I don't think we understand what it means when Bob and Dr. Prashant and Wilfred talk about the waiver that we have. Like, you know, the instead, we only pay like 110% of the institution, which is really good. And adding to the GA there, I'm only paying like less than 2000 a semester. So it's really, really affordable being here. And you don't want to miss on that. And even in addition to that, like we have other opportunities inside school like we can work, you know, apart from my GA, I'm also working again outside of my GA, okay? Uh, we have uh, opportunities such as you can volunteer and the vo number of hours you volunteer is uh, translated in tuition fees for you. So if you really work smart here, you end up not paying anything, like really nothing. So I encourage you, all of us, to apply and come here because you don't want to miss out. And adding to opportunities, we have events like every day inside school. Like sometimes you're even like, you don't know what, where to go. Like tomorrow we have a career, career fair, spring career fair, where you meet uh, alumni from the school. You meet uh, people who have excelled in the supply chain and even other fields, you know? So you really don't want to miss out. And I know like, we are talking about the weather being cold. Guys, I have very bad allergies and it has had nothing. Like the weather here is doable. Like my allergies are so bad that even in Kenya, it was a problem. But here I've not even experienced any of that. So the weather should really, really not worry you. And the professors are really cool, like, you really don't want to miss out, guys. And by the way, I'm in Dr. Prashant's office. So come and meet the great professors we have here. And we can't wait to have you. We are really waiting for you. We will help you settle. And even the like Joanne, I'm sure most of you have interacted with Joanne and Keril. They are really helpful. I work with Keril every day. They are really, really helpful. So don't you worry. We are here to help. The faculty is great. So we can't wait to have you here in fall. Thank Thanks you. Lot, Lorna. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Lorna. So just to add, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the good thing with IUP guys, uh, you know, because of the fact that also I was a student there. 
I think they also treat this program in a very special way. I think uh, they treat the program in a very special way from what we've seen even other universities do. Because uh, even, I haven't mentioned this, but also even we've been discussions with uh, Dr. Prashant to give him a list of some more students who can even get GAs before even they get to the school. You never get those kind of uh, you know opportunities, even with the other partners that we have. Mm -hmm. So this is a school that is really committed to helping our students. Uh, they, they can see the value that we bring to the school uh, you know, through the Kenya Airlift program. And I uh, want to encourage you, if you are out there and you really want to, you know, want to come here, since all of you are in the Kenya Airlift program, uh, it's good that you consider the school. So maybe you can hear more from some of the students. Uh, Daniel. Thank you, Bob and Dr. Prashant and uh, Cairo. Um, uh, much has been said by uh, Dr. Prashant. Bob and Lorna, maybe just to add, I would say that um, living here is not as expensive as we thought because uh, there are so many options outside school where you get uh, quite affordable houses for you to stay. And also, I will talk about food. Food is actually affordable and variety of different foods for you to have a taste. People are quite friendly. And um, when I came here, because I came a bit late, and I was like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to spend? I have to tell you that everyone right from the airport to to IUP was friendly to me because they were like where are you going I told them I'm going to IUP have you ever been to to the US they were like no um, I, I told them I, I haven't been so they actually brought me here I was supposed to be charged uh, about two hundred dollars because I came in late uh the driver the uber driver actually gave me a, a lot of discount and uh, he was friendly all the way until I arrived here. I was like, okay, so this is the US for you. And being in school now, I feel like this is home. And I would encourage all of us to actually consider what Dr. Prashant has talked about. Getting a job, it's 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 really easy because Dr. Prashant um, will share some of the opportunities for you to apply and will push through, make sure for you to get a GA. He did that for me. He did that for uh, James, and I'm pretty sure he will have a lot of opportunities for people coming in and fall. Uh, Working also, it's very easy. You can work as a GA. You can also work um, in different uh, clubs. They have organized different clubs for you uh, to join, including uh, where you can volunteer, just like Lorna said. And you get to convert those hours into uh, school fees, which is really, really good for us. And as CAP students, I would say we, we get an upper hand because we get to meet with Dr. Prashant. He would actually ask me, so how is the day going? Um, he would call us to his office, talk to us, encourage us, ask us if we have any issues. And Carol asked me because I actually live just across she would ask me how how my my stay here is and i would say it's really really welcoming and you should all be here thank you for this opportunity thank you bob and thank you everyone thank you thank you daniel
Uh, that's uh, great insights about your experience at uh, the school. Uh, just also to add on uh, what um, Daniel just mentioned, uh, IUP is about, uh, like Dr. Prashant said, uh, it's about maybe like an hour drive from Pittsburgh. And actually we engage the school uh, in regards to how our students will be transported from the university moving forward. I mean, from the, from the airport to the university moving forward, those who are coming. So there's those arrangements uh, for the school to be picking our students from the airport. And uh, we don't really have to have to worry about finding Uber and stuff like that. So these are some of the measures that we are putting in place with the university working together so that our students have a very seamless, um, you know, arrivals uh, into the US. So I yeah, just wanted to mention on that. Um, so maybe- A lot of good questions, but I want James to say a few things before I address the- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe James uh, can say something before Dr. Prashant can uh, address some of the questions that we are seeing on the chat. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prasun, for your, for your nice presentation. Uh, thank you, Bob, Ilona, and Daniel. You know, the risk of being the last one to speak, everybody has said everything you wanted to say, but I have one or two things which I need to add uh, on that just to reinforce some of the things which have already been said. One is the classes. And I want to encourage the team that you will come and find modern way of learning, modern technology and method of learning, which our professors are using in giving instruction and communication and work at class, which is very amazing. It is something we have never come across during our undergraduate. And it's very impressive to see how our techno technology is using to, to bring learning to us a very interactive way. Uh, secondly, just on the classes and learning, uh, like this one course we were doing is not only classwork, but even certification, which enable us to be ready for the market. If I can give an example of our business, data, uh, business analytic class, we are not only doing the classwork, but certification towards getting Tableau, Power BI, and all critical, which prepare us now to be ready to how the market looks at our, uh, our student uh, here at IUP, which is very critical and prepare us ready for the future. The, the other thing is the faculty member. I know communication and ease of meeting them and have a conversation. But also, even if you have come from another discipline, you'll find that if class is not adequate to understand what you are being trained on, there are tutors who are ready there to pick up and just enhance your understanding, which works very well in, in making your learning more manageable and easy to transition in terms of your, of your learning. Uh, lastly, of the opportunity, I know this one which has not been mentioned is scholarship, and that depends on your performance and everything, uh, which is a is a critical one also in just managing also your cost and your learning and your education. Uh, otherwise, uh, those are the three items I just wanted to add in all this presentation. Thank you. Thanks, James. <clears throat> I just wanted to thank Carol, my support person there who you can see, and uh, Joanne Bricher is the other person, and what uh, Lorna, Dan, and James, uh, Daniel and James said uh, is because of what they do. They really treat this more like uh, their passion than a job, okay? So international students especially, we welcome them and we take care of them to the best possible extent. Okay. So, and we have had great experience, not only from Kenya, from, but from all over the world. We have had international students here and we have treated them uh, very well. So you're most welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks to all three of you for making some wonderful comments. Uh, let me, yeah, I wanna first talk about the graduate assistantship. I'm so happy but, uh, that all three of them have assistantships now here. But I cannot guarantee that 
if 25 of you come, every one of you will have assistantship. It will be based on uh, merit. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of opportunities on campus to work. And uh, it says, OK, let me start uh, with the actual questions here. Kindly, when is the deadline for the fall 2023 application? Uh, we do not have actual deadlines, but uh, I think uh, if you uh, are serious about it, by end of March, uh, you should uh, have an admission because of the visa situation that you are all familiar with, which is not under any of our control. Although we can uh, write to the consulate uh, embassy in Nairobi through our uh, US senator, uh, but uh, you should start applying immediately and then get an admission by latest end of March. And our admission process is very simple. Uh, I think uh, Wilfred can attest to that. And then uh, once you have all the documents, we will get back to you within a week. Okay. Next question is Jeremiah Victor Oama. Uh, my question is about concentrations. Are there concentrations in MBA supply chain management as in, as in can I specialize in operations or project management? Wonderful question. Uh, <laughs> We do not have uh, actual specialization, sub-specializations, but if you come here, uh, I'm, uh, that is my area, supply chain. So I can tell you, you can either go into hardcore supply chain management or project management or quality management. Okay? So there are several areas in which you can specialize in. How do you do that? Not with coursework, but I can direct you to certification courses so there is something uh, by American Society for Quality. You can get uh, certifications in quality. Or you can go to PMI, Project Management Institute, and get their certifications. Or you can go to ASCM, Association for Supply Chain Management, who have uh, supply chain related certifications. So I can uh, coach you and also guide you of what to do. But we do not have sub-specializations in project management per se. Uh, then uh, Pratis, uh, hello, I'm Bachelor of Education. How easy is it for me to join business course? That is the beauty of an MBA. MBA is for everybody. And uh, I would say out of our international students, uh, 30 to 40% of them have uh, information technology background. Okay. so. Many of them are science graduates. Many are commerce and business undergrads. Uh, so we have people who have done hotel management and done an MBA. So MBA is sort of self-contained. So all the core classes uh, you will have uh, uh, before you take the specialization classes in supply chain. So you will be prepared. But I can tell you that you have to work a little hard. Uh, if you have never had an accounting or a finance or an economics class, you definitely will have to work harder than somebody who has had that uh, background already. But MBA is for everybody, not to, not to worry at all. How do we apply for the GAs? Uh, it's a very simple process. First, you need to have admission. Once you have admission, there is a form to apply for a graduate assistantship. And it is based on two things, merit and first come, first serve. So the earlier you react to that, and you have good resumes. I mean, somebody like James has uh, immense uh, experience before. If you have somebody like that, it definitely is going to become easier. But if you apply in June or July, our positions may be gone. And so you need to apply quickly. And definitely I will look forward if uh, Bob or Wilfred uh, recommend somebody because of their background, we'll definitely consider that also. So apply with the form, which is uh, which comes with the application form. Uh, thank you. You're welcome, Karibu. Karibu Sana. Uh, Anthony Simu, our G is almost guaranteed. No, uh, yeah, that's what I said. Uh, it, it is not guaranteed. That is, there are two things I cannot guarantee, uh, 100%, which is a GA, and we, second one is visa. <laughs> OK. so. Uh, we will definitely help you. Like uh, all the three students told you, I go out of my way to push our students. And 
both Daniel and James do not have the assistantship in the Eberly College of Business. They have it outside of the College of Business because I, uh, I recommended them and told them, told the other professors that these are good students who deserve an opportunity. And, and of course they did well in the interviews and uh, got the assistantships. So we will do our best to guarantee okay, uh, the assistantship, but I cannot say 100% you will get it. Yes, there are a few assistantships we will give you prior to arriving at the college. So again, I said merit and first come first serve. Please apply right away. I'm already in love with those professors. Thank you. I'm coming by the way. Can't miss all those goodies. Da, da, da. Change my accent like Bob. <laughs> okay. Enjoying the session. Good, good. Uh, hello, Dr. Is it possible for student pursuing MBA in supply chain to also complete the CPA exam? That's a tricky one. Um, CPA, as if everybody is not familiar, it is certified public accountancy. Uh, maybe in Kenya, you call them chartered accountants. Is that what you call them, uh, Bob or James? Yeah. Yeah, chartered, like India also, the British system, I guess, CA. Uh, here, we call it CPA. I don't think supply chain will, pre will prepare you to become a CPA, but it won't prevent you from taking a CPA exam if you already have a pertinent background. So I think the way you are thinking, uh, uh, Kennedy, is... Possibly you're looking at supply, you want really accounting CPA, but want to offer supply chain for STEM purposes. Uh, yeah, that is the beauty in the United States, uh, uh, unlike in some other parts where they don't pigeonhole you. Say, okay, you did supply chain, that is the only area where you have to get a job. Okay, if you can prove yourself that you have uh, ability to do other things, nothing is going to prevent you. MBA is going to be a stepping stone. You can definitely do a CPA uh, if you have the education independently without taking IUP accounting classes. And the other thing is you have to have 150 credits at the college level in the CPA. So they will evaluate all of your Kenyan degree uh, uh, credits and add the MBA to that. If it adds up to 150, you can sit for the CPA exam. They're not going to look at anything other than that. You are watching Success with Bob Moiti Show, presented to you by Upstech America. Upstech America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www.upstechamerica.com. Upstech America, we wake you up to the unlimited potential. Thank you for the impressive presentation and opportunity. Karibu, what recommendation or specialization is recommended for one interest in the healthcare industry? Healthcare uh, is one of the up and coming uh, industries. Uh, like I said, by the time you all graduate, there is a small chance that we may even have a medical school in uh, in IUP, which is a very big deal, but we are expanding in healthcare. We have healthcare administration, uh, we have uh, healthcare marketing, healthcare economics, we have uh, uh, hospital, uh, the, the hospitality, which uh, is a part of healthcare, not the, uh, the patient care, but healthcare, when you talk about a hospital, there is a lot of hospitality that goes in that. So you can do supply chain, marketing, hospitality, uh, finance, any one of those, uh, if you are interested in healthcare industry in the US or back home. And I, hello, Dr. Prashant. My question is regarding internships. Does IUP have such partnerships where students can complete the course? Uh, students completing the course can go practice in companies. Again, we ha certainly have. Uh, but uh, it all depends upon uh, your uh, ability to get those internships. Like Lorna mentioned, tomorrow we have a career fair here, uh, so which is open to all IUP students. So you have to go there, you have to impress uh, the employers. And also there are certain employers who cannot hire international students. 
so that you have to understand the challenges. But there is not a single student that I know, international student who has gone back home uh, without uh, doing what they want to if they have the persistence and perseverance. So definitely hard work is required. So a simple answer to your question is yes, but it depends upon you. It depends upon the economy. Uh, based on all of these things, internships, many, many students have done while they are in the uh, course, completing the course. Thank you, Protas. Vivian, if I already have an MSc in supply chain from Kenya, how do I transition the degree to the American accredited degree considering that the undergraduate was on the same field? Uh, the only thing you can do, Vivian, is get credit for a, a few classes. What we do is we can take from two to three class, your total credits in supply chain is 39. So if you have already a degree in supply chain, especially at the graduate level, you're saying MSc. Um, uh, so I'm assuming uh, it's a graduate class, not undergraduate. So we can accept two or three of those classes, but uh, beyond that, you will have to do the rest of the classes, but you'll save some money by transferring uh, six or nine credits. Uh, if it is from a, a reputed university that KAP will tell us it's okay to consider this uh, credits, but it has to be a master's. Undergraduate cannot be taken into account. Actually, I know about Vivian. She actually has a visa. Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, she has a master's in uh, supply chain management. I don't know whether it's from the University of Nairobi or Kenyatta University, which is one of the biggest universities that we have okay. in the country. It's it from Jomo Kenyatta University. Yeah, for the Jomo Kenyatta, which is one of the best schools that we have. Yeah, let uh, Vivian then get in touch with us on email and with her transcripts. We can evaluate and uh, let her know how many credits we'll be able to take out of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Job for those who defer to the fall semester but are yet to receive the right 20s. When can we? Okay. I didn't realize that there were some. Galil, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, let's work with Wilfred. Uh, if you already have a spring one, uh, admission and defer to fall. I don't know why you don't have it yet, but uh, we'll work on that immediately and make sure. Uh, uh, so Carol and Wilfred are going to get together and exchange the actual names of uh, those students. And uh, we will uh, make sure everyone has that in the next week. Yeah, so just to add on that, uh, if you don't have your I-20, you can maybe reach out to our career advisory team led by Wilfred at schools at kenyalifprogram.com. They should be more than happy to help you out. I've been seeing there's some communication going on. Students are getting the I-20s from IUP. So if you don't have one, just reach out to our team. They'll be able to follow up on your behalf. Thank you. Does the M's in supply chain management involve coding? No, no, there is no coding involved. Other than uh, pretty simple uh, uh, object-driven kind of software like Tableau and so on. So if you're thinking of real programming, none. Can you increase the chances of H1B from lottery to solid possibility? Bob, you want to answer that? If would you? Uh, well, uh, uh, Bobby, uh, when it comes to H-1Bs, uh, so the, the, the way it works is that uh, the U.S. government, actually, there is a cap on the number of H-1Bs that the, the government can process on a yearly basis. So normally it's uh, 85,000. Out of those 85,000, 20,000 are set for people with a master's uh, degree or um, anything beyond that, like a PhD. And then 65 are for those with undergrad. Uh, now, as a as a master's student, so normally what the what they do when they run the lottery is that uh, because normally, and maybe let me even say why the lottery is there. Because what happens is this: huh? so because there is a cap of 85 in total, 
Normally what happens is also there's a lot of demand for those H-1B visas. So you find that in a year, there'll be maybe around 200,000, that's usually like the average 200,000 applications by companies for those who want H-1B visas. So now what happens is the government does the lottery and what they do is they run the lottery for everybody in, in the 65,000 uh, cap for undergrad. So for example, if you're a master's student, you're gonna be in the first pool of the first 65,000 for those with undergraduate and anything above undergrad degree. So you have a chance there. Then again, because you are a graduate student, a master's student, then again, you'll be put in the, in the pot for masters because they, they put, uh, they give 20, an extra 20,000 uh, H-1B visas for those with a master's uh, degree. So you have a higher chance if you are coming for, you know, if you are applying for H-1B visa as, um, you know, as a graduate student, if you have a graduate degree rather than being, having just an undergraduate degree. So that's where we increase your odds. Um, yeah, apart from that, um, I don't see any other way that you can really increase your odds when it comes to H-1B, apart from just also the fact that if you are taking a STEM designated uh, master's program, then you have three more, in fact, you have three chances of uh, being in the lottery, okay? So in case you don't get the first time, then you have another chance and then you have another chance. But someone who takes, for example, just a typical MBA, for example, when I went to IUP 10 years ago, over 10 years ago, I did MBA in uh, professional accountancy. And in fact, actually, even supply chain management was not really a STEM at the, at the time. So I only had one year of uh, OPT, so I couldn't extend uh, for a further two years. So for me, I only had one chance to get a John B visa. And luckily I got it. So again, also because of the fact that you are a graduate student, you have higher chances. You may not stay for three, you may not try have to try three times, you know, because you can do the math. If they want around 85,000 and uh, they get around 200,000 applications. So you can do the math on what your odds are of getting the H-1B one B visa. Now, the other good thing, when it comes to jobs, huh, is that uh, because also part of what you do in the Kenya Leaf program is basically to support you and help you transition from being on a student visa to actually getting, uh, you know, being able to live and work here long term. You guys know that we have our, you know, job skills training programs that you have to pursue as you pursue your master's. So uh, also, let's say, for example, maybe you don't even get your H1B visa, for example, maybe the first year. You'll have also maybe accumulated some experience that are, can also be used for you to be able, for a company to be able also even to file for your green card, you know? For example, like right now, we are actually filing the green card for Wilfred. You know, we are just actually, we are just in the process of um, submitting his application with our immigration uh, uh, attorneys uh, so that we can, it, it can be processed. You are not going the H1B route because he already has the experience. So we filed for him under uh, EB3. And the good thing with Kenya, unlike Indian nationalities, is that for us, for Indians actually, for them to get a green card, employment-based green card, it takes them at least 15 years. The guys that we went to school uh, with, when the ones that we graduated with from IUP and we got jobs in the tech space, those guys are still not from India. They are still not permanent residents. They are still on H-1B. You know, they keep on extending the H-1 because your H-1 is given up to six years. And then if you've never gotten your green card and maybe you started already the process of filing for a green card through your company, the government keeps on extending, you know, your H-1B. So those guys are still on H-1B until sometime when they'll be able to get the H-1B because for India, there's so many applications from India and uh, the government cannot give them uh, the visas because they don't have available visas for them. But for us Kenyans, it's very easy. For us, if you file, for example, if you file for uh, uh, you know green card for you now, in 18 months, you'll have a green card. So you may not even need the H-1B visa as a, actually as a Kenyan. So that's also another advantage of being a Kenyan and also doing a STEM designated program, you know? So, there's those things. And that's actually why one of the reasons why we, in the Kenya Lift program, we really insist on STEM designated programs. 
uh, you guys know that that, that it, it's a big deal for us. So we don't want you to come here and then you only have one year of uh, OPT because it can be a problem. And if it becomes a problem and you are not able to figure it out when it comes to papers, then uh, maybe you have to think of going back to school and maintaining your status. And it, that's costly in terms of time and money. So you don't want that to happen. So that's why we've taken, uh, we took, uh, we really thought about all these things when we came up with the program, basically to, so that we can be able to address that problem of transitioning from being on an F1 to actually being able to live and work here in the US. Thank you, Bob. So, uh, and uh, thank you, Frederick. Uh, Redemptor, I'm happy to know that business analytics is one of the specializations under MS Applied Mathematics. Yeah, please uh, keep in mind that is a totally different program. It is definitely STEM designated, but that is under the math and computer science. You're welcome to apply for that and uh, pursue that, but then that requires coding, that requires a very high level of uh, mathematics. The one that uh, we are planning through the MBA program is slightly different, which is not approved, which will be very similar to what you saw that I presented in terms of coursework, where you will do marketing, finance, accounting, supply chain, and specialization in business analytics. But the one which is applied math, as the name indicates, is a lot of math. And that's a standalone program. That's a standalone program. Outside of the college, uh, college, Ebel College of Business. Yes. Yeah. Stephen, I have a degree in mathematics and computer science from Jomo Kenyatta University, I guess, uh, with only one unit relating to business studies. How is my eligibility? Like I said earlier, MBA was designed by MIT 50 years back for people who do not have business background. So not to worry. It is self-contained. Whatever your undergraduate degree is, you are eligible for uh, pursuing an MBA. And like I said earlier, you got to really uh, put in more effort than other folks who may already have some business background. So, but you will not... Uh, have any major issues as long as you are willing to work hard. Did I answer all the questions there? Did I miss anybody? Please let me know. Let me refresh my memory about Swahili numbers. Moja, Ambili, Tatu, right? <laughs> I, yeah, with, yeah. <laughs> with no stem, it is uh, Moja. <laughs> If it's STEM, Tatu, that's a big difference. Big yep. difference. Absolutely. Yeah, I can see. I think I can see you've answered all the questions. Let me see if there's any direct question to me. Uh, maybe we're afraid we want to say something. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Prashant and the team for the continuous support that you've been giving uh, our students. I actually really appreciate the fact that uh, this is one of the schools we have a more streamlined way in which uh, we handle different affairs, uh, including the applications. And uh, also it doesn't take a lot of time before most of the students are able to uh, get their I-20s and we, uh, we hope that the few who have not got yet uh, will be able to, to get their A20 mm -hmm. so that they can, they can be able to prepare um, adequately for the whole semester. Uh, but I, I look forward to us uh, visiting the school too uh, anytime soon and also seeing uh, the growth in terms of the Kenyan population there. I think we've, we've, we've earned a very amazing start having Lona there and um, Daniel and uh, um, James. James. James, sorry, and, and James. So it's a great start and we can't wait to see more of our students there. Uh, for the students who actually uh, are different uh, stages, um, 
I think this is one of the schools you really need to consider because I've personally been there. Bob was a student there also. Lorna is a student there, James and uh, Daniel. And they can attest to the fact that this is not just your garden variety type of school. It's unique in a, in a big way. And let's take the, the opportunities there. Let's grab the opportunities and be part of IUP. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I want to, I forgot to mention one thing, uh, which is if any of you have athletic kind of backgrounds or other kinds of backgrounds in fine arts or so on, there are other opportunities that we can pursue with scholarships and so on. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Where are the Kalenjins in the group? <laughs> Sorry? What is it? I asked uh, where are the Kalenjins in the group because there is a uh, one tribe, in, because not all Kenyans can run. Myself, I can't even save myself. Okay. <laughs> But uh, we have a tribe that runs actually, so I'm just wondering where are they in the group? Maybe those okay. ones could, could, could take up that. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. Kipchoge mm -hmm. Kino. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The likes of Kipchoge. Yeah, we've got, we've got quite a, a number of them actually. Yeah. And I can see Vincent, Vincent Taberi actually is one of the students with a visa for IUP for fall already. So, Vincent, you are there? Maybe you want to say hi to your professor? <laughs> hi, professor. I'm here. I've been keeping listening to you. It is a wonderful presentation. And I'm happy I'm going to join a very good school. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you here. By the uh, way, Bob has been kind enough to invite me to Nairobi on July 9th, right? 9th yeah, or yeah. so. Yeah. 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 Looking forward to being there. Welcome. Professor. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, for those who don't, I think you guys, all of you know, because if you go log in to our portal, we have that already there. Also, our event uh, will be, our chief guest will be uh, Dr. Prashant in Nairobi. So we can't wait to see him. And welcome him back to Nairobi. I, I, I don't know, I think there's someone who has raised their hand. I don't know whether they want to say something. Stephen or Lele? No, thank you, Bob. I logged in a bit late because of uh, some few challenges with traffic. But uh, I just wanted to request that uh, you know, we are still new on the onboarding process. And uh, we we are happy that we are getting all the necessary support that is needed for us to be able to cross the other side and also experience an environment that we've never been as a way of uh, trying to better ourselves and also expand on our knowledge. So I just had a request, maybe with the presentation that has been done. I don't know if that can be sent to us so that we can also have time to look at it. Uh, at our own free time so that when we are making maybe a decision going forward, we know that we've gone through the material and this is what we really need. I think that will uh, help us uh, going forward in making an informed decision. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I will, our media team will uh, take it and then uh, share with the rest of the team. <laughs> I think there was a, there's a, there's an extra question for you, Dr. Prashant. Yeah, I saw the research opportunities. There are plenty of research opportunities with faculty. It has to, faculty are always complaining that students are not interested to learn more than what happens in the classroom. But if you are one of them, Duncan, who is not like that and wants to do more, uh, there are a lot of uh, collaboration opportunities with faculty. We have a lot of PhD students, like I told you, and if you want to even pursue a doctoral degree, uh, we have full assistantship for that. That I can assure you for the doc PhD program because there are very few applicants. So yes, the answer is yes for research opportunities. Uh, athletic background, please talk to us uh, about that. Uh, you should be able to uh, run and uh, have the ability to qualify for the IUP team. Uh, there is a lot of uh, athletic uh, uh, there, there are uh, coaches 
uh, when you come here, you'll have to try out and then uh, they can, you can be part of the team. If you're part of the team, definitely you will get assistantship. But even if you're no, not part of the team, there are opportunities to work in the athletics area in some kind of uh, capacity. Okay. So, but it'll be a one on one on one kind of thing. We will talk. Uh, let us know uh, by email exactly what you're capable of. Yeah. And uh, just to add on that, actually, even when I was at IUP those uh, days back, we had a a group of uh, Kenyans who are in the school on athletics uh, scholarships. So you guys, if you can run, which I believe since we are Kenyans, that's our speciality, yeah, take up those uh, opportunities because American can't, they're not that good, especially in a uh, long dis distance, uh, you know, running. So you, you do well, actually. All right. I believe uh, maybe we can uh, end the session unless someone else has anything to say or anything, any comment from the students or maybe from Dr. Prashant. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for uh, listening to us. Looks like we haven't lost anybody. Uh, and uh, especially being so late in the night, like eight or nine in the night. But please keep in mind our email and uh, uh, WhatsApp through Wilfred uh, are always open. Uh, so please let us know if you have any questions and uh, we would love to have each one of you come to IUP in the fall and hope to say goodbye to all of you from Nairobi when I'm there in July as you're planning to come to the US and hopefully to uh, IUP. Good luck all of to all of you, irrespective of whether you come here or not. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right, Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. Kwaheri. Kwaheri. You have been watching Success with Bomwiti Show, brought to you by Upstack America. Come back again next time to learn concepts, tools, strategies, and resources on the path of becoming a successful immigrant in USA through real-life experiences. Be sure to subscribe to Bob Mwiti channel on YouTube and also follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn.